everyone and welcome to Brush and Bubbles. If you are new here then welcome to the Bubble family. We bring you new art tutorials every week so you can get creative from the comfort of your own house. So today we are going to be painting an under the sea coral reef. If you're anything like me and love snorkeling and scuba diving then this is the exact painting for you. And it's a super fun one to paint because we're going to go really blendy with our background for our sea and then we're going to be adding loads of colourful, bright, healthy coral along our reef. So without further ado, I'm just going to talk you through what you'll need to create this painting at home. You'll need a canvas, three or four different size paint brushes. The main two that I'm going to be using are a square shaped one and then a smaller pointy one. But then I've also got a tiny little one and then an old brush which has got quite scruffy hard bristles um, at the end which we'll be using for the coral. I always say that brushes are very personal preference, so if you've got lots lying around the house, pull them out and just give them a bit of an experiment and decide which ones you prefer. You'll then need some kitchen towel, a cup or a pot of water, a palette to pop all of your paints in, and I've also got a spare palette here which I'll be using for all of my mixing. If you haven't got another palette, you can simply grab a paper plate or even a plate from the kitchen. Last but not least, you'll need your acrylic paints. Once we get started, I'll be showing you which paint colours I'm using, but please feel free to have a mix up with your own painting. You can go rogue with your coral, you can go rogue with your sea. It's totally up to you which colours you use. So let's jump straight into our ocean coral reef painting. In my paint palette, I've got blue, green, yellow, pink, red, purple, a lighter shade of green, some white and black. To start with, we're just going to focus on our background and we just want to start with a lighter shade at the top and graduate the paint down, making it darker and darker until we get to the bottom of the canvas. So this is essentially going to be the sea. So at the top, it's going to be a lot lighter in colour just because that's where the light will be hitting the top of the ocean. And then as we get further down, it's going to just get slightly darker as we reach our coral reef. So like always, it's up to you what kind of shades you do, but I would just keep in mind that sort of formula of light to dark. So for this, I'm just picking up my medium square shape brush and just dip your bristles into the water to loosen them up slightly. Give it a dab on your kitchen towel. I'm just gonna mix up a nice light shade of blue. So I'm gonna pick up a dollop of white and move it over to my mixing dish. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of blue and give it a really good mix. I would just suggest mixing up enough to cover the top section of our canvas. So if you haven't got enough, just mix up a little bit more of the same shade. I also suggest just adding a drop or two of water into this paint and giving it a mix up again. As soon as you're happy with your colour, we're just going to focus this on the top section of our canvas. And I'm just going to do backwards and forwards sweeping motions all the way across the canvas, covering it all up. And then as soon as you hit the sides, you can just wrap the paint around your canvas. And then you can do the same with the top. So we're not leaving any of the canvas white. It's all nice and covered, even the sides. Now, because we're going to be blending in our next shades into this colour, what I tend to do, and I think it's a nice rhythm to get into, is when you're painting on the paint, drag the paintbrush all the way along and almost let it fall off the side of the canvas. It just gets you into a nice rhythm with the paint and smooths it out nicely. It's also lovely and relaxing to do. So when we darken up our blue, we're going to be blending it in with this previous colour. So I've just make sure that you've brought it down enough so that you're happy you'll still be able to see some of this shade and it's not going to get completely mixed in with our next colour. So if you feel like you need to bring it down a little bit more, now's your moment to do so. All we're going to do now is darken up some of this colour. So I've got quite a lot here, so I'm just going to pick it up and move it to another dish of my palette. And I'm just going to add a little bit more blue to it and give it a good mix to see the colour that I get. So we just want it to be a shade or two shades darker than our previous colour. And if you want to, as an extra extra, you can add a little bit of green to it just to give it more of a tropical vibe. 
whenever you're happy with your next shade. We're just going to paint this underneath our previous colour. Sweeping it right across the canvas and bringing it down a little bit just to get all of the excess paint off my brush. And when I feel like most of it is off my brush, I'm now just going to do the same, but I'm going to overlap that previous shade of blue, that lighter shade. And because I'm still using that backwards and forwards sweeping motion with my brush going all the way along, it tends just to graduate it into that first colour that we had quite nicely. So you get a sort of ombre effect with your paint. If you want to and you're struggling with this, you can always pick up some of your previous shade of blue and then blend it back into where that line is. And it just helps sort of even it out slightly. And don't worry if you get a few streaks in your painting as well, because we're painting the sea. So it's actually quite nice to get a few streaks in your paint because it just looks like highlight and reflection in the water. So I would just bring this darker colour down an inch or so, not forgetting to wrap it around the sides of the canvas as well. As soon as you're happy with that, we're just going to darken up this shade even more. So I'm just going to add some more blue to it and give it a good mix. I'm also going to add a touch more green. As soon as you're happy with your next shade, we're just going to do exactly the same thing again. And if you feel like your paint is getting a little bit dry, just feel free to add a drop or two of water in it and give it a good mix before you use it. What we're going to do with the next shade is exactly the same thing. So again, I'm just painting that along, nice swooping motions with my brush straight across the canvas, bringing it down a couple of inches. And then when most of the paint is off my brush, I'm just going to start sweeping it up all the way across the canvas, dragging it up into that previous shade. And when I say dragging it up, I literally just mean overlapping it with the previous shade that we've done. So it gives us that nice gradual effect. So as soon as you're ready, we're now just going to mix up our last shade of our C. So this is going to be the darkest shade of blue. So I'm just going to pick up some more blue paint and add it to the same dish in my mixing palette. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of green and give it a good mix. We want this colour to be the darkest one on the canvas. So if you want to, you can always just test the paint, the new paint colour underneath your previous colour to make sure it's dark enough before you apply it to that section because you can always just add over the top. If you feel like it needs darkening slightly just add a little bit more blue and a little bit more green together giving it a good mix and as soon as you're happy you can fill this all the way to the bottom again just getting all of the paint off the brush and swooping motions and then dragging it up to overlap that previous shade. And it's actually really important here that we work while the paint that we've previously just painted is still a little bit wet. And if you feel like your paintbrush is getting dry, just add a tiny bit of water to it, dab it off, pick up some more paint and then go back in and it just helps smooth it on. What you don't want to do is go and have a little break halfway through painting the background because it's important that the paint behind is wet so we can blend it easily. Once you're happy with your background, just give your medium brush a good wash. We now just want to have about a five or 10 minute break just to let the background dry nicely. Equally, you can also dry it with the hairdryer. We're going to move on now to mixing up the color for our reef. So for this, you can use any size brush, but I think I'm gonna go for this sort of pointy shaped one. 
and we just want to mix up a very dark colour for our reef. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some blue. So I'm just going to pick some up and move some over to my mixing palette. I'm then going to add a tiny bit of white to this mixture just because white helps make the paint more opaque, so less see-through. So I'm just going to add that in there. I'm going to give it a really good mix to start with. Now I just want to darken this up even more so it's more of a navy sort of shade. So I'm just going to gradually, and I mean very gradually, start adding a little bit of black to this mixture and just add the black very slowly, a tiny bit at a time because then you can control the colour that you're making more. Now the white paint also helps us get more of a grey-like shade with our paint so if you wanted to you could always add a tiny little bit more white to this mixture and then carry on adding the black and it just gives you a slightly more grey tone. As soon as you're happy for the colour for your wreath you can just test it if you want to on your palette or a spare bit of paper. We're now just going to move over to our canvas and this is the fun bit because we're going to focus this along the sides, along the bottom and then up along the other side, sort of like a U shape that hugs the sides of the canvas and the base. And this is going to be our coral reef where all of our colourful coral will sit on top of it. So what you can start to do is you can just be really free with your brush strokes. We want it to look nice and rocky with movement in there so I'm just pushing the bristles of the brush down and just creating this wreath like looking shape dipping it all the way down and all of this is all going to be filled in afterwards so you can just start creating your wreath shape You can change up the shape if you want to, so you might want to have a little bit more of a ledge sticking out, a bit more of a dip down there. You might even like to have a hole in it so it looks like a cave if you want to. And then as soon as you're happy, you can just fill it in with this same colour. And you can be quite free and choppy and thick with your paint if you want to, just because it adds a little bit of texture to those rocks that are going to be the base of our reef. And don't forget to wrap it around the sides and the bottom as well. As soon as you're happy with the shape of your reef, we're just going to leave this to dry again for another five or ten minutes before we add the coral, just so that our bright colours of our coral don't mix with this darker shade. So again, you can either dry it with a hairdryer or just have a little break and let it dry naturally. We're now going to move on to the fun bit, which is painting in our coral. And there are so many different shapes and sizes and types of corals, so you can really have fun with this. You can also have an experiment with your brushes. You might prefer to use a tiny little one for more details. I've got one here which has got a little bit more of a rough um, shaped bristled head. So I might actually use this to stipple some paint onto the canvas. You can use a flatter one like this to do a few more stripey kind of shapes or you can use the one that we use to paint in our coral, which is slightly bigger as well. So the one painting tip I would give you is just to add a little bit of white into the colors that you're mixing up for your corals. The reason for this is the white paint just helps make the paint more opaque. So it's slightly less see-through and you can get quite a nice bold looking coral. And once you've got that pastel sort of shade on there, if you wanted to add a little bit more of a bright pop on top, you can then do so and it has a nice base to sit on. So for example, to start with, I'm just gonna pick up my smaller brush and I'm just gonna mix up a very light pale yellow shade. So I'm just gonna start with some white as my base and add the yellow on top. So this is your chance to decide what kind of coral you want to start with and I do just feel like it's nice to have a really colourful, healthy looking wreath. So I'm just going to go really colourful with mine. 
I'm just going to start down here and I'm just going to do a wobbly sort of plant like looking wreath um, coral. So I'm just going to wiggle my brush with that light yellow up. And then coming out from the sides, I might just add another sort of branch, wiggly branch coming off of it. You might want to do a couple of layers of this paint. You can just start to create that coral-like shape. And as you can see, because I've added that white into the paint, it just makes it a lot brighter. And then if you wanted to, you can go ahead and add some yellow on top, just so it has a nice base to sit on. So once you're happy with your first coral, you might just want to add another one in the same colour somewhere else along your reef. But if you want to do, you could always change up the colours. It's completely up to you what you do with your painting. I might just add another smaller one sort of sticking out the side here. So for my next set of corals, I might just pick up a different paintbrush. I might experiment with the one with the harder edge. And I'm just going to mix up a light pink. So I'm just going to pick up some white paint, move it over to my mixing palette and just add a little bit of this hot pink to it and give it a good mix. What I like about a brush like this is you can actually just stipple the bristles onto the canvas and it gives you quite a nice speckled effect. And then you can add different shades on top of it. So I think I'm gonna go for this with my next piece of coral. So I'm just gonna focus this maybe around here. I'm just literally using the very end of my brush. I'm just going to stipple it, twisting the handle around so it faces different directions. I'm just going to stipple it onto the reef. Maybe it's going to come up a little bit into the ocean. Just twisting my brush around. Just adding a little lump of coral here. What's quite nice about this technique as well is if you want to, you can then always pick up with the same brush, just some hot pink, and then carefully just dab a few speckles on top so it gives it a sort of different texture and tone. You could also do the same with some white paint or yellow paint, it's completely up to you. You might want to add this colour somewhere else on your reef as well. So for my next piece of coral I'm going to go back to my small brush and I'm just going to mix up a light shade of green. So that's going to be some white as the base and then I'm going to mix up my own green. So I'm going to mix up some yellow and blue together. So with this colour, I might do a more plant-like looking um, coral. So I'm just going to do a squiggly line coming down. And then I'm going to do some other squiggly lines sort of coming down around it. You might even want to pick up some of your pure green from your palette and do a line with that or even some pure blue and let it mix in with the paint on your brush. I think the trick here is just experimenting with your brushes and with your different paint colours and it's nice to, to mix them all up. It doesn't have to look like a block colour. It's nice to add that highlight. I've just picked up a bit of yellow. I might just mix that in as well. So just have fun playing around with your paint, and getting a sense of what you prefer and what you like the look of and the shapes that you prefer and just try and let yourself go into it because it's quite fun once you once you sort of relax into it just giving it a little bit of white highlight you might even want to do a smaller version of this so you might want to do a small version right down here.
you might also like to add a little starfish. So for that, I'm just going to mix up some white as my base, a bit of yellow, a bit of red to make more of an orangey tone. And then you might just want to add a tiny starfish or two along your reef as well. So I would just say have an experiment with your painting, just take your time filling in all of that reef with all of the different colours, the different shapes of the coral, have an experiment with your brushes and the shapes that you're making and just allow yourself to let go and cover up that whole area until you're happy. Once you're happy with all of your colourful coral, we're now just going to move on to adding a few fishies swimming in the distance. So they're going to be quite dark in shade. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to use my tiny small brush. and I'm going to pick up some of the colour that I had for my reef. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of water to it and give it a good mix. So for these fish, because they're going to be swimming in the distance, we're just going to do tiny little shapes like this. And then we'll fill them in. Sort of like how you used to do a fish shape when you were at school. And then if you want to, you can add a few more colourful fish, which are closer to us. So just prepare your paintbrush with your paint. And then you can just go ahead and add a few of these tiny little fish swimming in the distance. It's quite nice as well when the paint is quite thin, so you've watered it down. You don't want it to drip, but it makes them just look a little bit further away. Once you're happy with your fish, as another finishing touch and as an extra, what you can always do is go back to the colour that you had originally for the top of your sea. And if you haven't got any of this left, you can just mix it up. It was just the white and the blue. And we're just going to add a few drops of water to this just to make it a lot more translucent, a little bit just like how we did our fish. And then what you can do with this, if you want to, with your smaller paintbrush, is you can just do a few very thin sort of dashes and lines in the top part of your water and this will just sort of symbolize the reflection from the very top of the surface. So I'm just carefully just dashing it on, it's more like a wash consistency. It just adds that pop of highlight. Once you're happy with all of the details for your painting, you have then completed your Under the Sea Coral Reef Masterpiece. I hope that you all enjoyed that and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to be the first to know when we have new videos out. If you enjoyed this tutorial then don't forget to give us a little thumbs up and if you have any requests for future paintings then just pop them in the comments below. Happy painting everyone!